What's going on, my dude? So, parallel compression, New York compression, what's the difference? Let's figure that out right now while we take a look at the new baby audio plugin, I Love New York. Let's get into it. What's going on, my dudes? Today, I want to talk about this new plugin I really like called iHeart New York. It's a parallel compression plugin, but in the New York compression style. So what's the difference? Well, let's start there. First, we'll talk about what is parallel compression, like regular parallel compression. And then we'll talk about what is New York compression, because there is a difference. Then we'll take a look at the plugin itself. There's only two knobs and one slider, so it's actually easy to use, but I want to talk about what's happening behind the scenes so you guys can take advantage of it better. And then finally, let's see this plugin in action, all right? I'm gonna show you guys my favorite ways to use it in hopes of maybe that'll inspire you guys to try some cool stuff, all right? Let's get into it. Ooh. Ooh. So parallel compression is any type of compression running in parallel along with a dry signal. While New York compression is specific compression and EQ settings running along parallel with a dry signal. The settings for the compression is usually very aggressive, and the EQ is a smiley face EQ, which boosts the lows and the highs. Using New York compression is supposed to add punch and power to your sound. Let's take a look at how the iHeart New York compressor by Baby Audio does it. So as you can see, this compressor only has three knobs. It's got spank, output, and the parallel volume slider. Now, right off the bat, this parallel volume slider is not a wet and dry. It's actually just the volume of the compressed signal. So the dry always stays the same, and then you add in as much of this as you want. There's also a solo knob, so you could hear just the compressed signal. And there's a cool way to take advantage of that, and I'll show you guys that in a bit. Now, Spank is gonna be that combination of aggressive compression and EQ that I was talking about. And over here in the signal, you can see what I mean. So there's an incoming signal, and that is split. And this is what I mean by parallel. So the dry signal runs along untouched, and then the parallel signal goes into the amount of spank you want, and you can turn that up and adjust it, and then it goes into the parallel volume, the slider I was talking about. And then both signals are brought back together, and then the output knob controls the entire volume. It's pretty easy to understand, but let's stop talking about it, jump into the DAW, and see this guy in action. Ooh. All right, guys, let's get into this. Oh, but before we do, if you guys are learning something new about parallel compression, New York compression, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you guys have any questions on any of the stuff that I've said or I'm about to say, please leave it in the comments. I always get back to you. All right, guys, let's see this guy in action. All right, so the first place that is a very common place to put parallel compression, New York compression. Remember, the only difference is New York compression is super aggressive and there's going to be a boost on the lows and the highs, right? It's gonna make it sound more punchy. A very common place to start adding parallel or New York compression would be a bus, a send, or the master, okay? So let's start out at the master. I'm gonna click on my master and you can see that I've got an iHeart New York right here. Okay, let's open this guy up. It's on the other screen. There it is. All right. And if you notice, I've got this little guy right here. Basically, all this is doing is showing me a peak readout of, well, the track, right? And it's the same as tabbing over and looking at your readout here. For the sake of ease, I like to add it right to the track. It's just a Max for Live device, no big deal. So the first rule about adding parallel compression is you don't want to exceed the volume, right? Because as human beings, we like things that are louder. Okay, it's just the way it is. So a lot of times if we just add compression or volume to our signal, then we say like, oh wow, it sounds better. But when you keep the volume the same, you can tell if it's actually the volume you like or what the compressor's adding. So I'm gonna leave the compressor off for a second and let's just listen to a second of this and you'll see that the peak hits around negative three dB, right? All right, now, what we wanna do is add in our parallel New York compression, and we wanna go ahead and make sure that the peak is 
sitting around. We don't want to exceed the peak by too much, right? I mean, it's not a perfect world, but we're going to do our best. And that's why I have this meter here. So let's go ahead and listen and also notice what the peak volumes are doing. So here we go. So we're right around the same peak volume. I mean, I could tweak it a little more. We could bring it down just the tiniest bit more if you really want to keep it exact. But now we have a more even signal. You can see it's not jumping quite as high. It's not jumping quite as low. And we've reduced the dynamic range and added a bit of power without totally exceeding the limit. So let me do it one more time for you guys. And I want you to hear how everything becomes a little more punchy, a little more even. And I'll A-B it a little bit for you back and forth. Here we go. So start with it off. To me, the signal becomes a lot more even, and I can hear the instruments in my top register a bit more even and as powerful as the low. This is a hip hop song, so you would imagine the 808 is going to be the loudest element in the mix, and it is. However, we want the whole track to come across as even and powerful, even though our 808 is banging. Okay, so that is the thing that I noticed there. I was getting more of an even signal through the whole mix. All right, so I Heart New York worked great on our master. I wanna show you guys one more really cool way that we could use this, and it has to do with that solo button that I was telling you about earlier. So let's jump over to the drum track. Okay, here we are on our drum track, and it's actually a drum rack, so it's more like a drum bus, right? So we can use these on individual tracks, but most of the time we're gonna use parallel compression on buses and the master. That's how I like to use them anyway. But I wanna show you guys this extra thing right here. So check this out. I made a parallel compression rack. So we're actually going to see two things in action. We're gonna see regular parallel compression and also how we could put I Heart New York inside a rack. All right, so check this out. Regular parallel compression. Okay, let's just kind of take a quick second and review it, right? So here's our dry signal. So let's go ahead and make this rack right here on the fly for you guys as well, so you know how to do that as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, first of all, just grab a glue compressor, right? Because why, why not, right? We all probably have that if we have Ableton. So we're gonna go ahead and set this guy up, right? So parallel compression is any type of compression. So what I'm gonna do is put it into a rack by hitting Command G, okay? And then I'm gonna look in my chains. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna name this glue. I'm gonna do this really quick for you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a new chain by right clicking and I'm gonna call this dry, all right? And you know, I could set this, this is, I'm gonna show you guys a typical New York compression setting, uh, super aggressive, right? That would be super aggressive. But again, I don't have to stick to that because remember parallel compression is any type of compression, but I just wanted to show you what an aggressive compressor would look like. And furthermore, if you wanted to see exactly what New York compression looks like, it would be something like this with a smiley face curve. So there's a couple of ways to do it. We could do it like this, you know, boosting the highs and lows, or we could maybe put a shelf and do it like this. So somewhere right around 100 and then you know, something like that. And uh, I've talked to Baby Audio. They said on their particular compressor, they don't have the attack that fast to preserve some of the transients. So I'm assuming they open up their attack a bit more. But a typical New York compressor would have a super fast attack. So this is sort of what Baby Audio is doing to their signal. Not really important. Just wanted to show you guys that. So any type of compression setting running in parallel with a dry signal is parallel compression. Awesome. So how could we get baby audio in here, okay? Well, let's go ahead and drag that guy in. So let's see where we got it right back here. I'm gonna bring it in. Now remember, this is simply a, it's not a wet and dry knob, right? This is simply a uh, level of how much New York compression you're gonna add. So if I, any amount would always give the dry signal too. And I don't want that in a rack, do I, right? Because I have my dry signal right here. Don't want another version of a drag signal. So this would be doubling it up. And this is where the solo button comes in handy. So if you hold on to the solo button there, engage that and bring this guy all the way up, 
Now you can mix that in just like you would any other compressor. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So we've kind of built that right here. Um, I went a little bit further and made some macros and all they're gonna do is introduce the signal. So we can get rid of this now, okay? And we can go ahead and have some fun with this. So again, what I like to do is, I'm gonna bring these guys back down and let's go ahead and solo the drums, okay? And let's take a listen. I've got my little, I got my little Swiss Army, my little Swiss, whatever this thing's called, Swiss Army meter. I'll put a link in the description. It's actually really cool. I think it's like three bucks. So let's go ahead and look at our signal as we play it and add in our compression. And we're going to thicken up our sound without adding a significant amount of gain, okay? Let's start out with the glue. Another cool thing I want you to notice before I start out is that in this particular situation, I've done something different. I went ahead and put a utility and made it mono. So in this particular compressor here, this guy right here, this glue, I'm actually compressing the mids, right? So mid side, I'm compressing the mids. All right, so let's go ahead and add that. And real quick, since we're doing this from the beginning, I wanna bring my dry back to zero because that's another thing that we could adjust later. So here we go, let's go ahead and uh, check out our signal and then start adding in the glue without adding in too much volume. All right, guys, we didn't have to watch me go through the entire process. I, I explained how we're gonna do it. Now, let's see the result, okay? All right, remember before we had that negative 10 peak? Now, let's A, B it. Notice the peak stays the same, but we get way more punch. Here we go, off. On. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful and entertaining. If you guys found that interesting, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, it really helps me out. I'll leave a link down in the description of all the necessary information you guys need. I recommend going and picking up this baby audio plugin. It's only 29 bucks and it makes New York compression done so easy. If you guys wanna see anything else in particular about this plugin or anything, please hit me up in the comments or reach out to me personally. All right, guys, see you soon.